it's been a really smooth transition, honestly. Like, you know, they, they took me in really well here. And, um, you know, coming out of last year, I knew that that was probably going to be my last year at K-State. You know, I just felt like, you know, for my future, like everything was kind of in front of me. And, you know, they were, you know, they wanted to go with, you know, Avery was the guy that, you know, and, and going forward for the future. And I, I get it, you know, and it was, it was a, it was a, it was the best decision for both of us to, to move on. And I, you know, I wanted to kind of move up and see, see what I could do. And obviously the, the NFL was what I had in my, in my sights and, uh, you know, and, you know, where I was at last year, I just felt like coming here to Ohio state was probably the best, the best move for me. And, you know, it, the transition was really smooth. Obviously it's uh it's a little different, you know, just being at, you know, a place of this pedigree and with the, the history and the tradition and the expectations, um, you know, but I, I feel like, you know, since I've been here, you know, I've, I've morphed into the, into the Buckeye way pretty, pretty well. And I feel like, you know, I've, I've gotten to gotten to know the guys really well, and, and they've they've taken me in really really well, and it's just made it pretty pretty seamless for me. You are listening to the Zen Game QB Show, where we go inside the minds of college quarterbacks. Today's guest is Ohio State quarterback Will Howard. We really dive into how Ohio State has completely changed his life after a very intense journey at Kansas State where he experienced all sorts of highs and lows and everything in between. If you want to listen to more conversations with elite college quarterbacks, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. This episode picks back up with Will talking about when he started his football journey. I started playing ball when I was probably seven years old. Six, Wait, actually, six, for, a lot, of, for yeah. a lot of guys. That was that was really when I started playing like tackle. I, I guess five is when I started playing like flag football. Um, but I always loved sports. Like baseball was the first thing I had played t-ball when I was like three or four. Um, you know, sports was always what I wanted to do. And, you know, I, I didn't know that football was going to be my, you know, my passion until really high school. Um, you know, I kind of bounced around when I was really young. I feel like it was baseball. It was kind of my first love. Um, you know, as I kind of grew out of the baseball phase, it kind of became basketball. And I was really infatuated with basketball in like middle school, you know, early high school. And I started as a, you know, freshman on varsity and you know, I was experiencing some success. And then I kind of realized, hey, I'm a 6'4 white uh, power forward. And, you know, the, the reality of the situation is that I'm probably not going to make it very far in, in basketball, you know, with, with my stature and my athletic ability and, and just, I, I either needed to get really good at dribbling and handle ball handling and shooting, or I needed to grow about seven or eight inches. And both of those were pretty, um, unlikely. unlikely. So, and I ended up falling in love with, with football. You know, I, I got to really my freshman year of, of high school, got moved up to JV varsity, um, you know, played a little bit on varsity, but really wasn't, you know, they, we had a junior who was the guy and then came in my sophomore year and ended up beating out the, the previous year's starter for the job. But I was struggling, you know, I, I got some offers, you know, I had Rutgers, I think, Yale, I had a couple of, of, of local offers, um, you know, became like a three-star recruit. And then my junior year came around, it was supposed to be my big year. Ended up halfway through the year, I broke my arm, I uh, got, still got some plate and screws in there. And that kind of derailed, I think, my recruiting a little bit. And I, I never really was able to, I feel like, show my true potential and, and kind of move up in the, you know, I mean, I, I was always a hater on the, the, you know, recruiting rankings and stars and whatnot. And I thought that was overrated. But it does, you know, kind of mean something at the end of the day. And it, it, it does like, you know, the kind of the, the narrative about you that you make early, you know, kind of sticks with you. Um, and, you know, when I got hurt, that definitely hurt. And I ended up, you know, having, I think it was five power five offers going into my senior year. And, and I just felt like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I had some guys late come in, you know, Georgia late offered me like really, really late, but it just felt like, you know, I had already committed to K-State at that point. And when I was, when I was looking at committing, you know, I, I, I felt like there were some other places out there that I really liked and, you know, some places closer to, closer to home kind of fell through. Um, and it really, at the end of the day, was was either probably K State or the Ivy League, and I decided to kind of bet on myself and and go K State. And even though it was further away from home, that was really the only thing I didn't like about K State because they they offered me in about two days. I, I started talking to them. I sent them a DM. Um, they offered me in about two days, which I was like, man, that that means a lot because all these ho schools at home are kind of stringing me along and and you know, not offering me like Pitt, Syracuse, 
Boston College never got an offer from any of them. You know, they they'd been talking to me since my freshman year and never never ended up getting an offer. And it's like a school like K State comes in, start talking to them, get an offer. It's like that means something. So I went out, I took a visit, and I was like, man, I actually really love this. You know, I didn't think anything of it. I was kind of like, hey, you know, they're gonna pay for me to come out, do an official visit. I did it like the first week I could possibly do officials. Like there was no real sense in my mind that I was like, I'm gonna go to Kansas State. Um, and I got there and I was like, man, I love this and I love the people and I love the place. And I was like, the only thing I couldn't get over was how far it was from home. But once I finally, you know, I prayed on it a lot, talked to my family a lot. And, you know, I kind of came to the conclusion that like, man, like, you know, this is where I'm meant to be. Um, and I ended up taking a shot and, and committing there and, and it all, it all ended up working out and it was definitely where I was meant to be. And, you know, my, my early career at K-State was was tough man but you know that that's kind of how i ended up there will continues discussing his journey at kansas state which begins with him backing up quarterback skylar thompson who is now a backup for the miami dolphins so i came in when i came in it was january of 2020 so it was right before COVID hit and so i early enrolled um which was tough it, it sucked because i was playing basketball i left you know i was at home with all my friends i was i was the oldest sibling uh, oldest of all my siblings you know everything just it was tough leaving home and and seeing everyone still at home and doing whatever um you know i was i was homesick for sure and obviously COVID hit and it was like okay so i did that and we didn't even get spring ball i didn't even i didn't get any live reps of anything until we got back you know june came around and we were still working out but it was weird it was COVID, and i was i was really competing for when I, when I first got there, in my mind, I was like, hey, I really want to travel this first year. I think that'd be great if I could make it onto the travel squad. That'd be awesome. And, you know, so I shot for that, and I was like, man, I, I think I could really, you know, make a run for this backup job. And I was competing with um, Nick Ost, who's, a, you know, still a good buddy of mine, Jaron Lewis, who I'm super tight with to this day. Um, and those two guys helped me a lot. And, and through that, you know, we, I don't think any of us were really sure who the backup was going to be until really the first game came. I wasn't really sure, like I was like, okay, you know, I think I'm gonna win this backup job. I think it'll be, um, you know, I think it'll be solid and I think I'll be good. Um, but it was the first game of the season. Skyler was, you know, having some problems with his leg, couldn't really run the ball well. And I ended up actually um, going in and, and uh, running the ball. And ran, uh, I think I played four snaps the first game. And, uh, and I was like, got my feet wet a little bit. And then obviously the third game came around and that was really the first time I realized like, oh, I'm the backup. Like, okay, I'm the, I'm the second string. And then, you know, but I still wasn't really ready. Like, I don't think I was, you know, I, I hadn't gotten a live snap with any on the field with anything until fall camp. And we had like 10 days of fall camp, I think and like a bunch of them got canceled and it was. It was crazy. So I just, I, I felt like I was out there kind of still feeling my way through it. And then game three comes around, Texas Tech and Sky tears his, tears his pec and he's out for the year. And they're like, hey, Will, all right, you know, it's your time. And I was unbelievably unprepared. <laughs> um, I, I, didn't, I didn't really barely even know our offense well enough to where I, I'm out there, you know, I, I look back at that and I'm like, man, I was just, that was a rough year. I'm not going to lie. It was, you know, we started off, I, I came in Texas Tech, we beat them. Down to TCU, started, beat them. Still you know, pl wasn't playing great. Um, beat Kansas at home, and then we won, or we lost five straight to lose, or to, to end the year, and it was rough. I was struggling mentally, physically. You know, I was dealing with a shoulder injury that not anyone knew, and I couldn't really throw the ball well. Like, I was just down on myself. I was alone, I was living alone. It just, it sucked. I was an 18 year old kid. Like I didn't really know. I lost a lot of confidence that year. And I came back my sophomore year and Skyler came back for his sixth year, which was understandable. You know, I, I understood why he come back. So I'm like, hey, okay, I got to wait one more year and then it can be, you know, my turn. Um, and game two comes around, Sky tears his PCL in his right, right knee. And I'm like, Son of a bitch, man. I got to go back in. All right, let's, let's go. But, but, you know, I felt this time I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm ready. You know, I'm, I've put in all this work. I did this last year. I'm ready. And I go in and I struggled again. And it was this second wave of like, Oh my gosh, like, 
maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I'm not, and, and I just doubted myself, and maybe I'm not good enough to play at this level. And, and um, you know, just wasn't wasn't myself. I just didn't feel like myself out there. And I played. I yeah, started three, four games that year. Ended up burning my red shirt. Um, just the year just did not go as I wanted it. You know, the Texas game that year was rough. We ended up firing our OC after that game. I think I threw the ball like nine times in that game. Just zero faith in me. Um, and, it, it, and you felt it. And it was just, and after that, and they told me in going into that game, like, hey, you're going to be the guy next, you know, going into next year. We want to build up your confidence. And, and it just didn't happen. And then they went out and get Adrian Martinez. And, um, you know, me, I'm like, you know, what the, what the hell, man? Like, this is, you guys told me to burn my red shirt. This was going to be my year. Um, and, you know, I, I, I understand why they did it. Like I had not proven myself up to that point, but you know, the things they told me, you know, it pissed me off a little bit and, uh, and you know, but, and they knew it. And like, I, I talked, I talked to coach climate about it, man. Like he, he knows how I felt about it at the time, but you know, I understand, man, I, I get it. Like I hadn't proven myself. They, they had to bring in someone and, uh, and, you know, look, looking back at it, but in the moment, it's hard to really understand that. And, you know, obviously I could have left, could have entered the portal. Um, and I thought about it. I was really close, but, you know, I said, you know what, they're saying it's a competition. I'm going to bet on myself, stay here, um, see what happens this year. I ended up losing the job that didn't feel good, but you know, that year I finally started to say like, you know what, screw it, man. I'm going to just be me, just go out here and play. And, you know, we played six games. I hadn't played at all um, going into that sixth game or going into the seventh game was TCU down there. I come in off the bench, throw three touchdowns, like 300 yards, played really well. We ended up losing. The next week, Adrian's still a little banged up, didn't know if he was going to play or not. Um, and it was l quite literally a game time decision. Like after warmups, Coach Kleiman pulled me and Adrian into the tunnel asked Adrian, how do you feel? And he said, I don't think I'm 100%. I can't. Like, he just didn't feel like he could go out there and do what he had to do to let our team win, which was admirable. And he, and Coach Klein was like, all right, Will, you're going. It's like, all right, well, shoot, let, let's go then. And uh, so I, I roll out there, and, and we beat the number 19, Oklahoma State, 48 nothing at home. <laughs> I threw four touchdowns in the first half, you know, 297, and and played, like, nearly a flawless game got carried off on my, you know, on my teammates' shoulders. Felt like I was on top of the world. The next week we come back, we play Texas and I didn't start. I was I was on the bench. Um and you know, it's weird, man. It's a it's a weird feeling and I and they said they wanted to save my red shirt and you know, it's um it's all good, you know, and and then ended up going down to Baylor and and Adrian unfortunately got hurt again, man, and and Adrian and I are like super tight to this day. I mean, Adrian the way that he went about the transfer and the whole situation, like I tried to emulate my transfer after him because I respected how he went about it so much. And he and I are super, super tight to this day. I mean, we, we really won that big 12 together. Like we were like, it, you can, you can say that I won it because I was starting that game, but like we wouldn't have won that thing without him. And like he, he just went about it so well. And then I ended up coming in, winning the rest of the games that year going down to, to Dallas, beating TCU damn near in their backyard um, on a like one of the craziest games in K-State history. And, um, you know, it's crazy because then you're feeling like a, you're flying high and you're the you're the guy, man, and everyone says you're great and telling you. And, and it feels like, you know, for me, I was like, oh, I've made it. You know, I finally made it through all that shit that I went through, man, like all the stuff that I just – that I – you know, just, I, I, it, it's, it weighed on me and it just, I, I was ready to freaking hang up the cleats. Like I, I didn't know if I loved the game anymore. And then this all comes in. I'm like, man, like, this is why I trusted God this long. This is why I prayed. This is why I like kept working. Like, this is why. And then, you know, going into my senior year, it was like, all right, you know, let's ball out, have a good year and go to the NFL. And, you know, you go through that year and First couple of games, I, you know, I'm turning the ball over a little bit too much. You know, we got a stud kid, Avery, and he, they wanted him to come in and run the ball a little bit. And, you know, I, I start, you know, kind of having some struggles again. And it's like, man, like, it, it kind of taught me, like, you're never, you're never, you've never made it, you know. No matter how, how much, how, how far you've come, 
how much you've gone through, you've never made it. And, you know, there's always going to be struggle and strife and, and no matter what, like you're going to have to push through stuff. And, and that was like that as, and I know I'm being lengthy with my explanation of my time at K-State, but like as much as it sucked and as much as I, you know, wish that I didn't have to go through some of the things that I did because it was brutal on a, on an 18, 19 year old kid, you know, like it, it, I struggled, man. I, I really did. Um, but you know, I look back on, it, I'm like, man, like God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. And, and like, he wanted me to go through all that stuff. And he, it, it, it taught me how to be a man and, and how to be better. And, and like, I, I really came into my own there at K-State and it, it prepared me, like you said, for this opportunity here at Ohio State. And now, you know, I'm on the biggest stage playing in front of, you know, pretty much the world every every week. And it's like, um, you know, if I didn't go through all that stuff at K-State, like I I don't think I'd be able to do what I'm able to do at this level and, and kind of block out the noise. And even after a tough game, like, like last week at Oregon, you know, it gets real loud and, you know, people are, you know, gonna say what they wanna say. But, um, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a process-based person, and you truly have confidence in yourself, then the, the things that people say about you, then they don't matter as much. You know, I, Aaron Rodgers said, you know, I, on a podcast, I think it was Rogan's podcast, you know, don't, don't take advice from Peter. Don't, don't listen to people you wouldn't take advice from. And, you know, like that, that kind of struck me a little bit. I was like, man, like, you know, why am I listening to these people if I wouldn't take advice from them? You know, and, and it, it kind of taught me to, to be a little more grounded. And if you're a process-based person, like you're not going to worry about the results as much. And, and, and you're not going to worry about what other people have to say about you. Why would I listen to what someone else is saying about me? Like, why would I, if I know who I am, why would I have to hear someone else tell me that? You know, like it's, it's all, it's all based on intrinsic confidence and believing in yourself. And, and through my time at K-State, I know I'm getting lengthy with it, but through my time at K-State, man, like it, uh, it taught me a ton and, and I'm eternally grateful as much as it sucked, you know, at times, you know, I'm grateful for the people and the, and the experiences that I went through and it made me who I am today. A lot of people, you made better people by the sole fact of just being you and accomplishing what you accomplished over those four years. Yeah, I, I, I tried, man. And, and you know, I, I hope my story and, you know, believe me, I, I, I know, like, I'm fortunate, man. I, I know that my problems are, are first world problems. You know, I, oh, boo-hoo, you lost to Oregon on the road. You know, like, I know there's people out there that are, that are dealing with way, way, way worse stuff. And my, my life could be so much, you know, it, like, at, at the end of the day, God has blessed me. And I'm in this place that I am, and, and I'm very, very thankful to be here. And the problems that I do face are, you know, they, they, they are not anything in comparison to, you know, what some people are dealing with. I mean, cancer, I mean, like life-threatening things that, that, you know, nobody should have to deal with. And, you know, I'm fortunate at the end of the day, but, you know, through that whole process, man, I tried to just be myself and I tried to bring as much joy as I could possibly through my, through myself and, and just being a positive person. I, I like to think of myself as a happy go lucky kind of guy. Um, and I, I just like to put a smile on people's faces and, um, you know, I, the amount of people that came up to me or, or messaged me after that big 12 championship or after my senior year saying, man, I I'm sorry about what I said about you, Will Howard. I, you know, I shouldn't have, you know, talked so much mess on you when you were a freshman. I, the amount of people that said that to me, and I got tired of hearing it, but you know, I, I, I hold no, I hold no bad blood for, for those people, man. I forgive all of them. Um, you know, at, at the time, you know, I look back at when I was an Eagles fan as a kid, I probably got pissed off at, you know, Donovan McNabb or Nick Foles after they had a bad game. It's like, you know, I get it, man. It's, it's, it's something that people are passionate about. Um, and it, it brings them a lot of joy when we have success. And, and obviously I want to do that. And I want to, I want to bring that joy to people. Um, and, you know, dealing with the, the hate and the, you know, the, the pressure, um, is all, is all something I've signed up for. And it's all a, a 
a, a responsibility that comes with, you know, being on this stage and, and, and being the platform, you know, being on the platform that we, we have. Um, and it's all a privilege, man. It's when you, when you step back and look at it, um, I'm blessed and I'm, I'm lucky to be in the position I am. It's, I try to keep that outlook on it, man. And, you know, no matter how hard it gets and how loud the noise may become, man, like I'm, I'm living out my dream. Um, and I'm trying to keep God first and, and just keep that, you know, in the right, in the right mindset. Yeah. I think when it comes to your problems, I think I've kind of learned, at least my perspective has been throughout life that everyone's problems are actually equal. Like in a lot of ways on the surface, some people's problems can look of mm -hmm. higher magnitude than others or lesser magnitude, but you just don't know what shoes they're walking in. And from the current perspective, when you're in the present moment, all you can do is fight the battles you're in and, and try to overcome them. So if someone's battle is trying to overcome cancer, that's the battle they have in that moment is trying to overcome cancer and support's important. If someone's battle is I need to overcome a divorce I'm going through, that's hard. And their battle is overcoming that divorce primarily mm -hmm. and just everything else in life. And so everyone's are just different. I think in your case, they do what's can be really challenging and lonely is there's complexities to them that a lot of people don't understand because they've never been in those shoes. They've never, there's only so many people in life that have been in the shoes of playing in front of 60,000 people yelling against you and then you win or you lose and everything comes along with that or you might have to go see your friend and Skylar Thompson or Adrian Martinez get injured and you don't have any time to process what just happened to my friend. I got to go out there and play quarterback. That's yeah. just some craziness that only you experience that you have peers that do, but just not a lot. And it's just learning how to, how to power through. That's a challenging and difficult thing. One thing that did strike me is you made Avery Johnson's life probably a lot easier during this BYU game recently where he had, he had to go through a moment where he had to be mortalized. Mm -hmm. um, and I think probably some fans sat down and realized we've been through this before. We can maybe take it a little easier on this young man knowing that yeah. we've seen what can happen. And, you know, I, I, I hope Avery, you know, he, he's, he's a great kid, man. And, and the thing is, is, at the end of the day, man, like football's football's football, and you're not going to be perfect. You're going to have bad games. You're, there's going to be a day where maybe you're just not on. Maybe you're not feeling great. And the reality is, man, you, you got to it, – it's all about how you bounce back. And Coach Kelly always talks to me about, like, you know, mental toughness. It's, it's how – how fast you can bounce back and, and move on to the next most important thing. And, and, you know, whether that's the next rep, the next play, the next game, next practice, whatever it is, like, you got to move on. And I, I hope in my time at K-State, Avery, you know, was able to see from, from my experiences that, like, you know, the sun's going to rise tomorrow. And, you know, it, it's, um, you know, as bad as it may feel in the moment, um, you know, it happens and you're, you're not always going to be perfect, man. And there's going to be struggles that you're going to have to work through, but it's going to make you stronger. And I think he's done a really good job the last couple of weeks of coming back and, and being better because of it. And I think, you know, he's a great kid, man. And I, I, I have no worries about it. Elite hair. Oh, elite hair. He's got some unbelievable, I used to call him Goldilocks back, in, <laughs> back when I was over there. I gave him a hard time a little bit, but it's, uh, it's, he's got some locks on him, man. You've talked about your faith. And uh, it was something that when I talked to Kobe, he said that was an area you guys really connected. It was the first thing he said out of his mouth was like, you know, Will is a man of God. And that's something that we deeply connected on. And through this up and down journey, what was the moment where you felt, because there could have been a lot of them, where you were at your lowest and how did faith help you get through that? There was, uh, there was some, some low times, man. And, and I, don't, I don't know if I could pinpoint just one. Really my whole freshman year, I really started leaning into my faith a little more and just, just trying to be around people that, um, you know, just, just encouraged me in my faith, you know, whether it was just going to church or just going to, um, you know, just going to talk with other people who were, um, who were, who were deep in their faith, like just trying to have conversations and just be more aware of, of God's presence. And, you know, I was, I, I grew up in a Catholic household and I was always, you know, went to church and whatnot, but, you know, I don't feel like, I really like dove into it and tried to like understand, you know, what God wanted from me and, and what it meant to be a, a, a child of God until I really got to college and, and had to live on my own and try and, you know, kind of 
um, na navigated by myself a little bit. Um, and in my junior year, I was, I, I, you know, that year when I was not starting, um, it was early on that year, I lost my, uh, my grandma and that was who I was really close with. She lived with us for a couple of years and that was tough. Like that moment, I really had to lean on my faith. And like, I was just, I was in a lot of ways, just kind of lost. Like, I just did not know what to do or where to go. And, and, you know, when I kind of finally stepped back and, and, you know, after a couple of weeks of just being a little like, you know, what, where do I go from here? Like, what do I do? Um, you know, I kind of stepped back and I said, all right, God, like, I trust you. Like, you take it from here. And, um, you know, when I, when I finally got my chance that year, like I, I just felt like I was playing free and you know, that, that, that's what I feel like when you, when you give it up to God and I, I'm not perfect, man. Like I sin, I, I'm not, I, I hope I, I strive to be better and I, I want to be better. And I, I, um, I've been better. I think, especially since being here at Ohio state, man, like there are some guys on the team who are unbelievably, um, you know, just, they're just passionate about the Lord. And it just, it makes, it makes me want to be better, man. Like G Scott, like, I mean, he's, he's going to do something, you know, some sort of missionary work when he's finished. I think Emeka is unbelievable in his faith. Travion, unbelievable. JT, like all these guys do some unbelievable things. And for me, it's helped me a lot. Like it's encouraged me in my faith and it's made me, um, you know, want to be better in it. And it's also made me play a little more free. What was the moment during this run where you felt you most felt something greater come through you? Because I think that's kind of the other side of that is there are moments where we do anything in life, but I think it happens in situations like the ones you're in in the football field almost more where you just feel like there was something greater coming through you or expressing itself through you as you were playing. Yeah, no doubt. It was, it was 100% that, that, um, that big 12 championship year. Like when I started playing, um, it just felt different. I don't know what, like, I couldn't describe it, but when I went in in that game, I, I remember the first, so the, the, that TCU game, it was the first time I had, I had, I just felt really connected with my grandmother before that game. And I wrote her name on my cleats and I wrote her name on my, um, on my wristbands. And before the game, I listened to the last voicemail she sent me right before, um, she passed. And I, and I listened to it t two times before I went out there on the field. And it's just like, I, I felt this like immense calm. Like I just did not feel any sort of pressure at all. And I just felt at peace. And it was like something I'd never really felt before on a football field. And when I went out there, like I had no worries. Like I was literally like, God's got me. Like I, I felt like this greater like purpose and this greater um power over what i was doing and i didn't feel like i had to do anything i just felt like i kind of let it happen and that whole rest of that year like that was in my mind that was her she had her her hand on me the whole way and and i think you know god like really helped me and that whole season like just really um you know kind of materialized that way and i was able to just kind of give it up and it started like a little you know that voicemail like that I do that every game now like that was something I do every game I, I write her name on my on my wristbands every game like this little things that I started because of that um and it just makes me feel a little more like every time I listen to that I listen to it once on the bus and then once um in the locker room right before we go out and it both times like even this weekend like I did it and it just like I almost take a deep breath and I just feel this calmness you know and it just it takes some of the nerves and stress away. You know, it's just like, all right, you know, I, I got this, you know, I, I, it's, it's not me. It's not me doing this. It's something greater. Um, and you know, I'm, when you're, when you're not playing for yourself, when you're playing for something more and when you're playing for the Lord and, and, and for everyone who came before you, like it, 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 it frees you to play loose, man, and not, not worry about anything. Frees you to be in the moment, right? Yeah. It, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, like, you know, when, you, when I get to take a step back and kind of realize what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, you know, like if I, I, I do this a lot, I think like, what would eight year old me think, you know, like what would, what would seven year old Will Howard be thinking right now? Like, he'd be like, you are the coolest person ever. Like you are 
the quarterback at Ohio State. Like that is all I've ever wanted to do. And um, you know, like when you get caught up in in the in the day to day stressors and and worrying about the future and, and you know what am I what play am I going to run on fourth down when we're playing Penn State up there? Like when you start worrying about that stuff, you know it, it gets a little it gets to be a little much. Um, but when you just put your head down, man, and when you remember why you're doing what you're doing. Um, you have a you have a, a a good why about you, and, and your burn and your passion is in the right place. Um, and 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 like Coach Ch Kelly always says, like you have a process based mindset, and you stay in the the day to day grind, the daily grind of of you know, hey, let's not worry about beating Nebraska right now. Let's worry about winning this Monday on this bye week. Like let's worry about winning the next practice that we have. Like. When you stay, when you stay like that, it, it, it makes everything a little more, um, it simplifies things and it, it just takes a little pressure off you. And also puts, gives you faith because you've had the experience in your life through a lot of challenges thrown your way. Gives you faith that the downs are for a greater purpose. Yeah. And that you don't know that purpose yet. I mean, you wouldn't have known that all of those steps that you experienced at Kansas State, which were incredible in their own right, and you have to have an amazing high of winning a conference mm -hmm. championship beating a team that went to a national championship could lead you to be the quarterback at Ohio State. Yeah. Now you're in a position where I'm, I mean, think about your eight-year-old self saying you're the coolest person ever. You planned for one of the greatest offensive minds of all time in Chip Kelly, legendary head coach, and you got, you're throwing the ball right now to your whole offensive skill room is NFL players, first of all, like guys who are going to go on to have great careers, be pro bowlers. Mm-hmm. There are people on the bench right now that are going to be pro bowlers. It's, it's outrageous. Yeah. And then you got a receiver right now you're throwing the ball to who's a freshman who might go down as one of the greatest wide receivers of all time when his career is over. And you're getting this formative process to be mm -hmm. there in the trenches with him for his first year of college football. Yeah, he's he's a generational talent, man. That kid's, that kid's unbelievable. Like, he's he just does things every week that just make you just be like, I mean, what what the hell, dude? Like this guy, th he's not real. Um, and the fact that he's 18 doing what he's doing, man, is is unbelievable. And I can't say enough good things about him. He's a an unbelievable kid, an unbelievable athlete, and and he goes about it the right way. You would never know he's a freshman. He's a he's a veteran in every sense of the word. Um, and I mean, he's he's freaking Megatron, dude. He's a he's a freak. I lo love asking it, and you've gotten to go to a lot of places. What's your favorite road trip of the college football experience so far? <sighs> That's a good question. I played at some cool places. Um, I think the coolest trip that we've taken definitely was the Big Twelve Championship. Going down there, playing at AT and T Stadium, was cool. But I mean, given it's an NFL site, I think one. I think the loudest environment probably was Austin on Saturday. That was probably the loudest environment I played in. Um, I think Texas last year, you know, obviously both of those wish, wish that we had a different outcome. Um, Texas last year when we played them in overtime, that was a big noon kickoff game. That was pretty cool. I think Baylor has a really underrated stadium. I think their stadium's really cool. Um, and then I think playing Oklahoma in 2022, even though I didn't play because Adrian was still playing, um, that was, that was electric. And we beat them, I think it was like 48, 39 or something, like something crazy high scoring game they were doing the light show at night and that was a fun fun atmosphere and winning that game was awesome i mean it's hard to even describe some of these fan bases are just it's electric and i've heard mm -hmm. from a lot of athletes sometimes when you're on these road games and everyone's cheering really loud against you in theory as a player you kind of feel like they're cheering for you yeah a little bit i mean you kind of it, it just kind of blends in you know it's just kind of background noise and even like the last play of the game at Oregon was probably the loudest I've ever heard a stadium um and like my freaking like internal organs are literally like pulsing but like you don't hear it like when you're out there and you're in the moment and you're in the zone like you don't you don't listen to it and you're not wor you're not really phased by it and it kind of just kind of just becomes like some sort of like background you know white noise it it's amazing that <laughs> I just take a pause. It's like, it's incredible that you guys at the age you're at get this uh, comfort mm -hmm. <laughs> in these spaces of just 60 to 100,000 people yelling yeah. at you. That's insane. Yeah. It's, and there's really like for a, you know, me talking to like a JJ or like an Avery, like there's no way to replicate it other than doing it. 
and and being out there and, and experiencing it. So like the more that you do it and the more that you're in environments like that and you play in it, like the more used to it you get. And now where I'm at, and I was talking to Seth this morning, like like I wasn't phased at all. Like I didn't even really hear the noise. Like you get to a point where you just get so comfortable in those environments and and it, it just doesn't really phase you anymore. It's just something that you kind of do. And you know, it's part of your job. Hey, there's gonna be a hundred thousand people yelling at you, but it's just kind of part of the job. You know, it's just like, you know, if anyone else were to have the, you know, their boss breathing down their neck, you know, it's, I guess, similar, similar deal, but, um, you know, I, obviously a little different, but you know, it's just kind of, it's kind of what we do. It's kind of weird, right? Like you can be in these environments where a hundred thousand people are yelling at you and it doesn't phase you, but you got like, you'll have an individual in your life, whether it's a parent or a girlfriend or a friend, and they'll say something and it agitates you. Like, you're, yeah. you're still human it's so exactly. weird exactly oh yeah like that happens all the time you know like it's unbelievable how a hundred thousand people can't phase you but one can you know? yeah. like so, someone yeah. says the stupidest yeah. someone says the stupidest comment yeah. and it'll it'll drive you for yeah it'll drive you for a whole day but you know yeah. you got you sitting in an arena and have yeah. 50 50 60,000 people just blaring and hoping for you yeah. to fall flat in your face and you're like, yeah, that's all good. Yeah, those exa people, exactly. those people yeah. don't get to me one bit. Yeah. And then just kind of closing, I think that um, uh, if you could think of one factor, when we look back at the end of this journey at Ohio State that just prepared you for life in general, what would it be? Man, um, boy, that's a, that's a really tough question. I would say that the biggest thing that I've gained from my time in college, um, and I think two people, I think really had a, had a big impact on me was it was, you know, and I learned a lot about myself and through myself, through the kind of the things that happened during the seasons. But I think it's the off seasons and the, the, the strength conditioning programs, training programs that coach Mick and coach true at Kansas state put us through. Um, and I think those two, Coach Tremaine Carroll at uh, Kansas State was our strength and conditioning coach for my sophomore, junior, senior year there. Um, and just an unbelievable guy. Like one of those guys that just, I could sit down with and have a conversation with about and, and pick up probably five new things every time I talk to him and just be like, and this guy is just a wealth of knowledge and just wants to pour into every single athlete that he has. I learned so much from him in my time at K-State, just how to how to respond to adversity, how to how to, how to just deal with people, you know, just different, you know, communicating with different people. Like he just, he had a way about him that, you know, he was able to teach through, you know, teaching, but also kind of through what he did. And then coach Mick here, um, I, he's a legend, man. He's done it for a, a ton of years. Like when I left K-State, you know, I was kind of like, man, I don't, I don't think I'll ever find a, a strength coach that I like, you know, even as close, he won't even come close to coach True. And I got here and I was like, man, Coach Mick is is right up there with Coach True, man. Like he is like those two guys have had unbelievable impacts on me. And, you know, just just the seeing the way that like Coach Mick, I think, is just a mastermind of of a mixture of having fun and making things enjoyable, but also pushing you and making you become the best version of yourself. I think he does an unbelievable job with that. And he's been doing it for a really, really long time. And he's able to connect with people on a different level that you don't see with a lot of people. And I think the things that those two people have taught me along my journey and just kind of the things that they've put us through throughout the off seasons, like really has made a, a big difference in my life and, and turned me into a, a different kind of, of, of man. Something that a lot of fans don't get exposure to either. Mm -hmm. Strength and conditioning staffs. Yeah. It's a big and, part of your experience and you're with them every day, but it's not someone necessarily on the field, except for maybe I actually experienced coach love who's the strength coach at Oregon when mm -hmm. he was at Florida Atlantic. And that guy's like a larger than life personality that it would be impossible to miss on the field. But mm -hmm. most strength coaches kind of go under the radar, but are such a big impact in your lives. Yeah, they get, they, they fly under the radar like crazy, man. But those guys are, I mean, it's coach day and then it's coach Mick. I mean, those guys, are, those guys are running our program. And I mean, when it, when it's the season, obviously coach day is the guy. Um, but when it's the off season, man, like coach Mick is, I mean, he's pretty much our head coach for, most of the the off season you know hours and you know whenever we have those workouts like he's running them and he's 
he's a big reason of why we have the culture that we have. And, and I think Coach True was a big, big reason. You know, we brought him in my sophomore year and he completely changed the culture. I think he was a huge reason that we changed our culture. And, you know, it starts with them because we're with them probably more than I'm with, you know, my, my quarterback coach or my, my head coach. Like you're with those guys so often in the off season. And the off season is obviously much longer than the, the regular season, you know, so you spend so much time with those guys. They, they have such an unbelievable impact on the guys in the program, but I feel like people outside of the program don't really understand that, you know, because all they get to see is what we do on Saturdays. You're only allowed to be with the strength staff for the most part for many months of the year. Really? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like you literally can't be with our coaches with a football, you know, for most of the year. And so we're spending most of the time out there with, you know, so, with, with Coach Mick so and the all, all boys. you're going to do is get your body better, which is going to be, I, I just, I can't do an interview and not ask that after you give that answer. What maybe are a few ways you've learned to improve your either like fitness or nutrition since coming to Ohio State because, or even mental health, because their focus on that here is probably as great, if not greater than anywhere else in the country. Oh yeah. And I think, I think K-State does a great job too. But I think for me, it was when I got here, like I had a different outlook on it and I, yeah, I, I wanted to take more responsibility for it. And I, I got here, I was a little overweight. You know, I didn't really, it wasn't really where I wanted to be physically. I dropped about 15 pounds, um, was eat, finally started eating right and got me on a, a meal plan with my nutritionist and Coach Mick. And they got me, they got me right on that. I was doing some extra cardio on the weekends. Um, and then, you know, I was working out really hard. And, you know, I, I think the biggest difference too was recovery. I, I, I started taking care of my body a lot better here. I have, you know, this like zero gravity chair at home that does this, you know, it's called shift wave. It's unbelievable. It's changed my recovery. I got my Norma Tex at home, red light therapy, dry float tank at the facility, cryos, sauna. Like I've utilized so much more recovery tactics here and I have to because I'm getting older. You know, I'm 23 years old now. I'm a little beat up. Um, so I got to got to take care of my body a little better. I can do a whole episode and all those individual things, oh, yeah. but and in short, all that stuff works and you feel it. Oh yeah, you you, you feel it. I feel it out on the field every single day. Like I I just felt different this fall camp than I did even in the spring and even last year. Like it was just taking care of my body. You know, I, I got a routine about me. Like every day in fall camp, I was cryoing before I left. You know, I was getting you know massages on my arm, whatever it was, like to make me feel better. Um, and then just taking care of my body, you know, working out hard, eating right, like that stuff, you feel it. It makes a big difference. I can't, I can't, I can't imagine. And I think that sometimes the intention is as, is as important, maybe probably more important than the actual surroundings that we have. And I have to imagine just kind of coming here to talk about your kind of own intention changing. It had to be, you had the big 12 championship year at K-State. When you were coming into that last year, I think that the thought process you know, you're not a guy who has size concerns. You're not a guy who, you're a guy who has all the physical tools to go play in the NFL. So you're coming off that season. You're going to get your full season to be the guy. And your thought was, I'm going to go to the NFL. I'm going to go have this year. I'm going to go ball out. I'll win another Big 12 championship. I'll get to the NFL. And probably getting to the end of that season was just a major personal reality check only in the sense of like, I'm probably not going to be drafted where I'd want. If I go out, I'm probably going to be in a camp, but it's probably not going to be the way that I wanted that story mm -hmm. to go and so when this opportunity comes up and it becomes you have that whole up and down and then like oh wow i'm gonna go to be the quarterback at ohio state mm -hmm. it was probably a different level of dedication that comes just from having that understand that probably humble humbling experience of a degree because any any outcome out of the end of last year but mm -hmm. going to the NFL and being picked in the first few rounds was going to be humbling because that was probably your expectations. Yeah, there. absolutely. Like, I think coming out of last year, it kind of – and not that I was complacent or anything. Like, I don't think I was not working hard. But I think it, it – you know, coming out of last year kind of lit this spark under me that I needed. Um, and I think I was a little too comfortable coming out of the Big 12 championship going into my senior year. You know, and I'd been at KSA for a while. And, they, you know, I was about 240, 245. They were like, hey, you're good there. You know, it worked for us last year, you know, you know, and I get here and it's like, hey, we, we think you can get down to 232 and be a little more lean. And, and, you know, they have a little different expectations for you. And it's just a new outlook on things. And, you know, it definitely, you know, lit a new spark under me where I, I was like, OK, I need to become a different version of myself here and, and, and really, really step it up and ramp it up if I want to 
be the guy here. Um, and I, I realized that early on and, and, you know, I, I know that it's going to take a lot, you know, to, to be the you know starting quarterback here at Ohio state. And to, you know, if I, if I want to be a starting quarterback in the NFL, like my, my goal was to be drafted in the first, second round. And, and, you know, that the reality of this is, I mean, the, the Brock Purdy's and the, the Kirk cousins, they happen, you know, you know, late draft picks becoming starters. But if I want to be a starter in the league, like to give myself the best chance, I have to be drafted pretty high. And, uh, and I, I felt like I wanted to give myself the best chance and coming here and developing a new kind of plan, I think was the best. best Chip Kelly has gotten a lot of guys there. And then Ryan Day, of course, if you look at the lineage of Ohio State quarterbacks, it's the best of anywhere. It's incredible. You play quarterback in the Ohio State, play quarterback in the Ohio State history. Oh, man, I actually said it right. If you play quarterback at the Ohio State, history says you're going to be a first round pick at quarterback. So it, it's nice to have those tailwinds absolutely. behind you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was like, you know, when, when Coach Day started talking to me, I mean, you don't have to say much when you're, when you're in his shoes. Like, I mean, you can look at it. You can look at the success. I mean, CJ, JT, Dwayne, I mean, Justin, like every, I mean, you look down the list, Cardale, like, They've had a lot of success and, and, and I mean, and like coming to a place like this, I was like, man, you know, I, I, it, it was hard to turn down. It's, it's, it's nearly impossible. I'm sure there was a shock to the system too. Competition breeds good things sometimes. And when you saw De where Devin and Lincoln were at, even when you got into the program, I'm sure that was a somewhat of a shock to the system of like, whoa, like this is a, not that you didn't have that at K-State, but like the depth in the QB room has to just push all of you guys on a day-to-day -day basis where like you said, every guy in that room, even the freshmen, could be starting somewhere. Oh yeah, it right made, now it made me, it made me so much better just having to push myself because all those guys were were pushing themselves and we all made each other better. I think we've all gotten so much better even since the spring and I think it's it's a you know a, a compliment to you know all the guys in the room and, and the way we've gone about it and pushed each other in in a positive and and loving way. I'm excited to look back on this. I got the fortunate chance to interview all three of uh, Tyler Shuck and Donovan Smith and Baron Morton who are all in a QB room together and then mm -hmm. they all started games this year. Yeah. This room's going to be very similar yeah. next year that I'll get to look back on with a lot of these guys starting games here or you know, yeah. somewhere else over the next three to four seasons of college football at least. There's going to be some oh, fun yeah. Saturdays you'll have where you'll have multiple of these teammates Absolutely, starting, man. I'm, starting I'm, games. I'm excited for them because they all they all got a bright future ahead of them and they'll they'll do some special things. That's just how time. it works. But uh, give Ohio State fans what they can look forward to the uh, remainder of this season. What 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 to excite? What Ohio State fans have had a lot to be excited about already this year. You guys have played absolutely sensational football thus far. You've had maybe the breakout star in college football on your team. But what? would you say they have to be excited about that maybe they haven't seen in this first half that in the second half they can be pumped about? I mean, I think, uh, I think we, the, the thing that's exciting for us is that we got everything in front of us. And, um, you know, I know that that loss hurt, but just know that it hurt us to the core and we don't want to feel that again. And we're going to do everything in our power um, to make sure that we don't feel that again. I, 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 I'll never forget that feeling walking off that field. And, um, it's not going to happen again. And I, I, I promise you that, like we are going to be better because of this. And I think, you know, it, it, it stings now, it hurts now. And I, I you know, do I want to go back and, and change the last drive and how we would have done it? Like, yes, absolutely. Um, but I think, you know, going forward, like it's hard to beat a team twice. And I think we're going to see Oregon again. And, you know, we got to go around the table and we still got everything in front of us. And, you know, I think, you know, we, we go out, we win the rest of our games, see Oregon in the, the Big Ten championship, give them, give them a, a, you know, a better shot, and you know, we, we still got everything in front of us. So I'm, I'm excited for, for the challenge of, of how, how we're going to respond from this. Based on that prediction, my future brother-in-law is a die-hard Michigan fan. It yeah. Sounds like team up north is in for some disappointment in that, in that path. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be a fun one, man. We're, we're not, uh, we're, you know, Say what you will about the team up north this year, you know, I, I think I think they're, you know, a, a solid team still. And I, I uh, you know, that that game has unbelievable emotional, um, you know, an, an emotional impact. So, you know, they're going to be ready to play. And um, but, you know, we're not looking past anything, but that one's definitely circled and we're excited. Man. We're not going to we're not going to hold anything back. I've heard you guys have epic victory meals down here. So, oh, yeah, that oh, yeah. one would have a potential to be 
particularly epic, I'm sure. I'm it, sure that one will be uh, probably the most extravagant of them all. Uh, I'm excited to check in on what that is like in the uh, in the rest of the season. But uh, pleasure having you on and can't wait to watch the rest of it unfold. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you guys for having me on. Appreciate you guys. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Will Howard as much as I did. If you want to listen to more conversations with elite college quarterbacks, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast on Apple's podcast and Spotify.